Welcome back to the coverage of YSIS Rimini 2016. We are already uh, getting started for our round 9 feature match, so you can tell the time in, in between rounds should be a lot shorter today, with yep. uh, a few exceptions between the top 16 and the top 8, for example, uh, because we're going to type up the written uh, yeah. top 8 profiles. And there's also going to be a short break after the end of Swiss and the top 16, uh, top 32, of course, um, where players have like 10 minutes to review the final standings after yeah. Swiss and make sure that everybody has got the correct number of wins and yeah. so on. Yeah, I'm going to rearrange the hall as well. Uh, yes, that's, that's true. So <laughs> there are a few things happening, but in any case, it's, it's going to be short breaks in between the rounds, and I think that's good for you guys. It's more entertainment for you. We just had our um, last round's winner, Stephen Jacobs, who is now 33rd. If we can just bring up the current standings for you guys. Nope, we can't. <laughs> okay, you just have to take my word for it. You can, of course, also find the standings on the written coverage. Uh, you there's a link below the Twitch chat, um, below the YouTube description. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Yeah, I think there is. Um, and, of course, uh, you just go to the uh, official written coverage. You can find all the standings there because our scorekeeper is updating them as they come in. Um, every round for you guys. So 33rd, Steven Jacobs now on the brink of sneaking into the top 32. This is the um, the magic, uh, well, threshold, really. Yeah. For our match Very this close. round, we got um, Alexander Hulch, who made some waves yesterday. <laughs> you will see where I'm going with this. When he defeated Joshua Schmidt in a clean sweep 2-0 victory with his trusty Mermail deck. Yes, Mermel is still a thing. Um, Luke, are you still with me? Yeah, I'm finally. You're recovering? Okay. Yeah. Um, his opponent is uh, Giorgio Boccio with Luke's favorite deck. Uh, Domain Monarchs. I thought that like a part of you just died inside. when. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. There is a lot of Domain Monarchs. It was the wave joke <laughs> that did me. <laughs> a lot um, of Domain Monarch at the top of the field. Yes, lots uh, of Domain Monarchs. It, it was the most popular deck going into the weekend. Yeah. So in in that regard, it's not that surprising. Yeah. I mean, you need like 15 less cards than everyone else, so... <laughs> Makes it definitely a lot more affordable than yeah, some of the other Easier decks. to carry. Also, yeah. Yeah, you need like one less deck divider. <laughs> These are all positives about Domain Monarchs. Uh, Alexander Hulch is currently in 39th position, so if he wins, he's going to be in the top 32. Yeah. I think he cannot afford to lose the last round, however. Um, maybe with a draw, but you never know. You cannot rely no, on that draws either. draws are a bit risky. So, yeah, um, he, he needs to win this round. Uh, and the same, of course, is, is true for uh, Giorgio Boccio. Um, Boccio. I, I learned that. It's a CH, so it's Boccio. All right. So, um, I think you know everything about uh, Domain Monarch. What is there to say about Mermaid? Yeah, so um, they kind of saw this resurgence with uh, with a kaiju engine so they he's playing the full kaiju engine with um triple slumber uh, triple gamma seal and then he's playing uh radian as well um that's that's the thing we we talked about yesterday because yeah. we saw kaiju pop up here and there um cause some havoc like these things do and then we said is there ever gonna uh, such a thing as a pure kaiju deck and you said no the yes. closest we can get to this is basically that deck. Yeah, isn't it? Mermel Kaiju is the kind of the closest to you can get to a Mermel deck. I can't remember uh, to a Kaiju deck. Sorry, I did. Say, did I say that yesterday about the about the Kaiju's? I, I think I've said That's it at what least I once. Stream. Yeah. Yeah. So no, you did. It's like the only one that you you would play Slumber in. Um, yeah. But that's kind of the way that the Mermel deck functions. It's really good at just producing OTKs out of nowhere. Um, well, not out of nowhere, but that's that's basically what the Mermel deck does. So it's it's you know you play Slumber, remove all of your opponent's um, monsters from the field, and then you you just have to deal with the one Kaiju that gets left right. there. Right, and that's not too much of no, an issue. Not at all. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about his side deck and his extra deck a bit more in detail once we're at the match. So let's take you guys to it. Alexander Hulch versus Giorgio Bocchio. All right, so there you see Giorgio on the left, Alexander on the right. Um, there's the handshake. And how important is it to go first with these two decks? I mean, Domain Monarchs, you we... You want to go second with Mermil. So that's a pretty big advantage for him in this format, where yeah. everybody tries really hard to go first. Um, rolling their best die rolls. Yeah, okay, he opens double tenacity, isn't ideal. But at least he can tenacity to go get a pantheism. 
Uh, who is the favorite going into this match? Um, I'd like to think that it was Mermail, just because they don't really use the extra deck a whole lot. Mm, yeah, uh, they do so use it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, they but they do use less it. so than other decks. Yeah. yeah, but they can function well enough without it. Right. So, so one one of the key th strengths of uh, Domain Warnock doesn't really play such a major role here. Yeah, not not a massive massive role. Obviously, it's you know it, it still ma matters, but not not in a huge way. Like you know, if it was. Um, like a pendulum, for example. Let's just go with pendulum. That's the easy, easy one. You know, if if it's pendulum, then yeah, they they absolutely lose to domain. There's also a, a question because this game is uh, not quite underway. Like we're starting, but we're getting there. Um, somebody's asking, "Oh, I just missed uh, the the last match." You can watch everything that we posted this entire weekend over on YouTube. Um, all the pre-recorded content is there, uh, everything that we aired already, and all of yesterday's matches. So uh, yeah. if you ever feel like this is maybe not the match I'm looking forward to, for whatever reason, if you don't want Mermail, if you don't like Mermail, um, then you can do that. <laughs> we won't yeah. mind. Yeah. So right. let's, let's have a look at Surface. Surface is a card that not, not many people played previously in Mermail. Yeah, so just you to know what Surface does. I remember the artwork because it's uh, the one that's got a... Uh, uh, what are those things called? Submarines. Sub the submarines. They are submarines. Yes, indeed. I couldn't, remember, I couldn't remember the word submarine for a second. Are you a fan of submarines? Um, not massively. Okay. I think it's, uh, it's a cool bit of tech, submarines. <laughs> okay. I just... But I think it's just... I couldn't handle the pressure of being in a submarine. Yeah, you, you're surrounded by water the entire time, yeah. and you just feel, oh my god, if, if the um, wall is going to crack, we're all going to be drowning. Yeah. Not not the best... Uh, not the mirror fast kind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Erebus straight away here. Let's see what it takes away. Um, yeah, actually, we just have four Took cards the left. surface. So, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, well, we're not going to see surface it's anymore. Does it look like Georgia likes you very much? No. But at least he has Undine. So this is quite an interesting thing. Um, I remember when when you used to play the uh, Gen X controller version of this deck. You like back back when we didn't have Kaiju's. You would pl want to play multiple controllers to try and make sure that you could always resolve Undine. Um, but he's kind of just playing one controller, which is probably better off. You used to you used to play uh, multiple controllers with multiple Allure of Darknesses. Maybe this deck can go back to playing triple controller when uh, when Allure goes back to three. That'd be possible. Hmm. That's very uh, very interesting. I think. So um the the opening turn is shaping up for Giorgio. Yeah. What do you make of this? Is um there anything missing there, or do you think this is uh, this is pretty standard opening? Um I mean, yeah, pretty standard return. He's got domain the domain domain established. Yeah. So I don't know if it does. Does Giorgio know what Alexander's playing here? Not yet. Unless they have been playing next to each other the, the previous rounds. Yeah, I guess when when someone's playing a reasonably interesting deck like Mermail, you... Oh, it's a DT Undine. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. favorite. Routine. Details. Details, yeah. No, it's important. It's important. Because now the next que the next big question in this game is, is the controller also DT? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the big question. It is. It is. It is. Oh, he's going to win. He just won your heart. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, this is what people meant when they said he's a very experienced and uh, good mermaid player. They, yeah. they were talking about the rarities of his yeah. cards, of course. And, I mean, the only way that he could possibly be any higher in my books right now is if he summons a DT Trishula. That would, that would, be, uh, that would be it. I'd go and run, run, in, run in the feature match and give him a hug. So or a high five or a high five one one of the other. either either one ether one ether, ether one <laughs> <laughs> all right well we're gonna see ether very soon um yeah so he pitches heavy so infantry on the plus side Shorto is definitely gonna be aware of Alexander playing Mermel no <laughs> a little bit <laughs> he's got some shiny cards I mean he's double ultimate dragoons and everything. Secret Regal, wow, this deck is so shiny. This is what I always liked about Mermails. Mm -hmm. It's such a shiny deck. Yeah, I, I like your attention for detail. Yeah, yeah, you you definitely it. got the correct priorities. Yeah. Just Ultimate Dragoons just looks beautiful. Well, what's, the, what's the correct noun? The shininess of my deck? The shininess, yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. So, Domain not doing too much. 
in this particular matchup. See Undyne and Abyss Megalo on the field. Yep. And uh, Abyss Gale. Uh, Alexander's far from being done here, is he? No, he's 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 got stuff. Still in the setup portion of his turn. Yep. He could um, happily play that Abyss Gale um, now to be able to. I'm pretty sure Sestus gives. Is it, no, it's not 500. Oh, it is. It's 800. Okay, wow. So he. It's can not 500. It's more. Not 500. It's more. I thought it was 400 for some reason, but that's obviously a 400, 800. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, so he could put that on Megalo and get over that Erebus right now. It's one of the decks that doesn't have too much of a problem attacking over uh, 2800. No. No, because well, usually you just deal with stuff with heavy infantry. Right. So yeah, I think he's going to search for uh, Dragoons now. Yeah, so it goes for the Moon Glacier. <laughs> Giorgio just has a quick look. Does he have four waters? The answer is no. Because that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Does he have the ability to put one more water in the in the graveyard? Um, let's bring up his hand again. There we go. Radiant, Abyss Gund, Genex Controller, Abyss Scale. Yeah, so he can put uh, he can put Undine in the graveyard by um, using Tri Megalos Effect. Megalos Effect, yeah, attributing it. Uh, how many does he have to have in the graveyard for? F I think it's four. Is it four? It was a, a weird number. I'm not saying an odd number because then people think I mean. Oh, I seem to think that it's f five. Now that like, I, I can't even read the, the <laughs> number. <laughs> Luke is putting his glasses on, <laughs> trying again. Yeah, I think it's five. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of text on Moulin Glacier. It is. There's a lot of text. I'm gonna. Try and make sense of it on my laptop. It's a bit easier. Five, exactly five water monsters in your graveyard. So we're counting uh, two at the moment. Is that correct? Uh, no, 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 no. He's got four. Is it already four? Yeah. His, his graveyard looks so flat. To be honest, it doesn't look like yeah. there's a lot of cards in there. Oh, okay. It's because they're all ultimate rest. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, he's treating them carefully. At least, yeah. at least he's, uh, yeah, doing that one. That much he's doing correct. Yeah. Okay, so Megalo is now going to town. Yeah. So he's, he's well, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna try and trick a Moon Glacier here. And he Boom. succeeded in doing so. So he gets to discard two cards from his opponent's hand. That is such a good card, if you can resolve it like easily and. This is on the first turn, so uh, definitely remember this is good for that. I'm confused. I don't know why they didn't roll the dice to choose like, the one he card that, doesn't that he keeps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope, that's easier. <laughs> so he had Erebus, Testalos, and Stormforth. And he's going to be left with... What does he want to be left with? Uh, I mean, He's left with Erebus. Yeah. He wanted to be left with Stormforth. So not good for him, I guess. Nope. And uh, Monarchs are not known to make the most out of few cards. No. And he doesn't really want to fight against a monarch either, so he's going to give him a kaiju. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can one-up you still. Yeah. So yeah. This is looking pretty good for Alexander. Yeah, so Moon Glacier does have a drawback that when it leaves the field that you've got to skip your next battle phase, which is a little bit rough, but it's worth it taking two cards out of your front's hand. Definitely, yeah. It also sounds like... In that way, it's it's kind of balanced. Yeah. Oh no, it definitely is. The question is like, is it too easy to summon? Uh, I guess not. Moon Glacier. Yeah. I mean, but oh, it's now it is. Mm. There's um, I think it's just Nep Neptibus plus. What is it like, Diva or something? I can't I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's like just Nep Neptibus alone makes makes Moon Glacier. Yeah, I think Nept Neptibus alone makes Moon Glacier. So there are quite a few ways. Yeah. Okay, so Giorgio now has Erebus and Edea. And he. Look, looking for Stormforth, which is. Bit, it's pretty much Stormforth. Because he's. Has he got a. Yeah, he's got Erebus in hand. Oh, wow, he's actually got a really good hand. He's got Eidos as well. How did that shape up so quickly? Uh, he, he had Erebus and then 
he's you know drawn it drawn he drew into the idos and then now he um used the pantheism effect the second pantheism effect right wouldn't be possible after the newest so much for the monarchs cannot do much with just a few cards yeah well i mean he's proving you know, us wrong he had plenty uh plenty in the graveyard Is Eddie? Eddie's effect. Summon an Eidos. Eidos effect. I'm going to give him an extra tribute summon now. It's looking pretty good for Giorgio. Yeah, he's. Considering that, like, just a turn ago, I was like, yeah, this is looking pretty good for Alex. <laughs> I think there's very little that Giorgio can do. Yeah, well. Um, I'm eating my words right now. Yeah, Mulling Glacier is kind of not too threatening just by itself. In a way, it would have been better for him to have Stormforth at this point. Right. You know, you know the card when we were talking about which cards were discarded? It would have actually have been better for him to get Stormforth, <laughs> to mm -hmm. have Stormforth, or for, for Alexander at least. And that is it. Yeah, yeah. he can he can tell there. there's yeah <laughs> there's more coming. He's th he doesn't have a battle phase next turn, so even yeah. fewer ways to fight back. Um, yeah, and, and that was pretty obvious for him all of a sudden that there was yeah. almost nothing that he could do. Wow, that was that was a bit surprising. And with uh, charging just three cards, and suddenly he's like, "Yep, here's yeah, my, here's my field." I feel like Alexander's hand was actually really strong as well. Mm. Uh, let's let's take a quick look at the side decks of these guys. Um, maybe we start with Alexander. He's got Max C in his side deck. It's not the worst card against um, Mermail, certainly not. Um, he also got Effect Veilers. He got Majesty's Fiend. V Veilers are good. Oh, Majesty's Fiend's good, yeah. Twin Twister, Typhoon, Solemn Scolding, and Battle Fader. Yeah. Battle, Battle Fader will be a good one. Might probably. actually also not be bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, like most of his side deck is really useful here. Yeah, quite a lot. Um, I mean, the, the the Twin Twisters and the Typhoons, not so much, but almost everything else is pretty useful. Yeah. Scal he's playing Triple Scalding, which is interesting. Um, Alexander, on the other hand, is only playing five different cards in his side deck. Um, of course, he's playing... He's also, play he's also playing Scaldings. Oh, yes. That's uh, interesting. Together yeah. with Twin Twisters, Typhoon, Forbidden Chalice, and Effect Veiler. Yeah, he's not playing Sphere at, at all, Abyss Sphere. He's maxing out it's on all the cards. It's the first time we've seen that this weekend. Yeah, uh, three, three, three. I, I usually like to play my side decks like this. Mm. Don't like the silver bullets? No. So, um, the, the element of surprise is now obviously gone for Alexander. Um, yeah. Giorgio does have a really good side deck for this matchup, it seems. I'm not sure, is, is this a general thing that um, many of the side deck cards just tend to be good against Mermail as well, or is that... Like, Ma Max, Max C has obviously been been around since Mermail was the, you know, really top tier deck. Yeah. And Ma Max C's, you know, Max C's always there. It's, it's always going to be somewhere in people's decks. Um... I guess you know Maxi is the key one. Ve Veiler again is a card that's you know it's been sticking around for years now, so it's always going to be an option for people to to side deck into. If you can if you can Veiler like a Abyss Pike or something like that, is actually is he even playing Pike? No, he's not. That's really really strange. So maybe the effect Veiler is not actually going to be all that useful. I thought he was playing Pike. Right. Actually, effect Veiler is not going to be useful. As a deep sea diver. At all, apart from diva, yeah. Mm. That's pretty much it. it. Undine doesn't matter. Um, Teus kind of matters. Um, so yeah, okay, you fail the Mulan Glacier, but you're just kind of hoping that they don't get to play the Mulan Glacier this time around, I guess. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd, I, I could see Effect Veil going in here, especially considering he's not he's not got her uh, Alexander's deck list sat in front of him, so he doesn't know yeah. he's not playing Pike. Of course. Yeah, bit of pile shuffling. <laughs> Gotta get it in. Gotta get some pile shuffling in. Yeah. He's only got his little magical shine ball that he can look into and try to make sense of what's gonna come next. Yeah. But yeah, Alexander Hulch doing pretty well. Like we said, um he's on a respectable six two record, only lost two games. Uh currently leading the pack 
is um, again a lot of Italians, just like last year. How is our one UK player doing? He's second with, and he's also undefeated, uh, Ben Russell. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Fabio Minicozzi, who we had yesterday, is playing Mer uh, Sorry, he's playing uh, Minerva. Uh, Lights one. Fabio is undefeated too. He's undefeated <laughs> after oh. eight rounds. So wow. if, if you want to see what Minerva can do for Lights one, you can watch our feature match uh, yesterday's feature match, and then we also got. Um, Sandro Ficini with Cyber Angels, who is 7 1. We didn't see Sandro yesterday, did we? No, we didn't feature him. But um, that's probably a good. M it's probably not a good match for the next round because he's most likely going to be in. Uh, either way, wh whatever happens, because he's yeah. 6 going into this round, and even if he loses, Ooh. he's going to be among the top 20. This is pretty strong now. I think he might be able to play Milan Glacier turn 1. That is pretty strong. And that's when uh, Effect Veiler would be handy. Um, yeah, but Giorgio does not have it. Spoiler alert! I just got two two copies of Domain, Idea, Erebus, and Kuras. If he's able to discard that Idea, that would be pretty big because that would just leave basically nothing to play for Giorgio. Right. And uh, Alexander has Surface again. Yeah. Bit of submarine action. So, so much for the Neptopus. You just talked about this just two seconds ago when you're like, yeah, I think Neptopus is enough to just resolve Molin Glacier. I think, I think so. I think it is because you, you, you do something like, um, yeah, you search the second Dragoons. With the Dragoons, get Diva. Normal summon the Diva. Um, Diva goes and gets, I think it's Marksman. Uh, heavy Infantry. Okay, so <laughs> I was wrong there. One, I know it's, it's one or the other, so I had a 50 50 shot. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly how the combo works, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, you can you can get Milan Glacier. You you synchro into things like um, uh, Tatsunoko and um, what's the other one? Coral Dragon. Just look at that field on the very first turn. Yeah, so it might be slightly different now that we have Coral Dragon actually. Yeah, so Herald of the Arclight. <laughs> this is one of those adding insult to injury openings. Yeah, overlay into Dweller. So uh, uses. Yeah, that's how you get the second uh, Dragoon search. You, whenever Dragoons is used for the cost of a water monster effect, even if it is yeah, the I likes see. of um, mm -hmm. Dweller, uh, it, you get its effect. Right, so it doesn't check how it ended up in the graveyard. As long as uh, it was used uh, for a cost. Yeah. Like not from what zone is what I was trying oh, to no, say. Yeah, no, yeah, as long as it's used for a cost. Yeah. So some people might be wondering why would you be using uh, Dweller on your own turn? That's the reason. That is the reason, yeah. Yeah. So he goes and gets Megalo. Did he naturally draw Mola Glacier? Yeah. Okay, yes. As, so as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it looks like it didn't. It happened quite fast. Yeah, so there's Mola Glacier? Yeah, first turn Mullen Glacier. Like, <laughs> starting the game with three cards. We were talking about four cards yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three uh, cards. And well. the, the Dweller is also um, a good card, of course. Yeah. Oh, he just guards the Eddie. Oof. That was like a one in five. Well, that's two in five a, shot. That's a sucker punch. Yeah. Georgia just left with Erebus, Koros, and got Domain. Side? It's got to be one of his side deck cards. It's a Forbidden Chalice. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, this this is a really good opening for I Alexander. Think Georgia Hosh. just passes. Yeah, Georgia just passes here. That this this is this is going to be it. His deck is completely um yeah put his efforts all put to a halt yeah. by that explosive opening from Giorgio. Yeah. And that is the second yeah. game. Alexander Hulch just tying the wow. score in spectacular fashion. Yeah. I think this is <laughs> similar to what happened yesterday when, he, amazing. when he won 2-0 convincingly against uh, Joshua Schmidt. Yeah. Uh, Joshua was really salty. It was actually during the time when we had the phone of Long Dao who was with Joshua in a group. And, yeah. and Joshua described how he lost in great detail on the WhatsApp chat that this group had, and you could you could tell he was not happy. Was like, oh, this no, version of Mermaid that is so luck dependent, and he had everything, and he just gave me two O and ah. Oh. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, well, it's just you just saw what exactly what happens. Yeah, it, it was all, it was only summoning. Um, I'm pretty sure with just Neptibus you can you can do it somehow. I I, I can't remember in all honesty. <laughs> I can't remember, but yeah, that's crazy good. Yeah, I mean that was that was. Definitely a 10 opening. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you start with two cards. Uh, or one of the best openings, either way. Um, mm -hmm. The only the only other really good opening was when the zombie player uh, made sure that his <laughs> opponent would start without any cards in hand. 
And yeah. for whatever reason, his opponent would not. Yeah, it's a bit overkill, really, isn't it? When yeah, he's this guy's running around taking two cards out of people's hands. He's yeah. like, oh, no, I need more. Yeah. I must take them all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's actually, I think he's 7-1 at the moment. He's uh, the zombie player. Yeah. If I, if I remember, Tor Torben Wahl. Torben Wahl, yeah. Yep, he's ninth. In wow. in this round, he's seven or one. People are people are going to make the top cut with all these all these crazy yeah. uh, crazy decks. We're going to see some more interesting yeah. uh, f plays this weekend. Um, yeah. It's also a Solkin Monarchs near the top, a twenty third place by Andrea Bramante. Um, it's another deck we didn't see that often this weekend. Yeah, I think a lot of people are playing Solkin and Monarchs now that we have to go through. And surprisingly, I don't see there's one pendulum, two pendulums. Um, Couple of unknown player, uh, unknown decks, uh, three pendulum players in the top 32, uh, four, excuse me, four. There's Lorenzo Santoni. Yeah, four of them at the time, at the moment. Uh, one of them last year's winner. Uh, that can, of course, still change after this round, but it's, it's not like an, an overwhelming amount of pendulum at the top. Nope. Far from it. All right. What about the third game? Giorgio wants to go first, I presume. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he wants to play some Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, he wants to play. <laughs> so you, you want me to start again? You don't want to play? <laughs> okay, here we see. Oh, okay, he did put Scaldings in. Ooh, that's a rough hand. If that's Oh, no, it's Gamasil. Mm, still not, r not a great hand. He actually, like, he's got a f full hand worth of side deck negation cards. So Vela strike. But let's see where the monarch player goes here. Oh, he just passes. Okay, so both players are playing with uh, with their side decks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's just that's just monarchs. He needs to draw. Not that. That's really odd. Both of these hands. He's are just really gonna really pass with scalding set. Do I set chalice? No. Nope. Wow, talk about a non-explosive opening. This is suddenly... Oh God, is that though? For some reason that car looks like a snipe hunter, but it's not. It's Two obviously not snipe hunter. <laughs> it looks like a super snipe hunter. Both of these guys... Oh, it's Vader, okay. Took a one-way ticket to Switzerland. Super neutral, super non-aggressive. Yeah. Um, wow, that is that is the least explosive opening we've seen all weekend. Yeah. And especially after that second game that yeah. was just uh, over in, in an instant. Yeah. It's kind of surprising. I think... Alexander here, okay, he might let the foolish go through, but then negate whatever, whatever gets foolished. But like, my opponent hasn't played any cards. He just drew a card and then played a card. I think I should stop it. <laughs> it's, it's like yeah, it's pretty. He, um, yeah, he he knows that the opponent's deck I think is not doing. He, he's just thinning his deck right now. Hmm. Wants to improve the odds of drawing a life card. Yeah, I think it would be, it would be beneficial. Oh, actually, no, because he can discard the Prime Monarch to get it back. Okay, so he's actually It's not doing just something. thinning. Yeah, it's not just thinning out. It's actually doing no. something. He should have He should have negated that, in reality, hmm. with Scalding. Actually, no, that, well, that wouldn't have mattered because the cost was to discard it. Oh, that's rough. So the Foolish would have been the correct... Yeah, I, d I, I, in all honesty, that was that was my thinking. My opponent's not been playing cards. He's now played a card. Let's stop it. Yeah, but typically you don't want to use a scolding on a foolish, don't, don't no, you? No, but they're they're both in a pretty weird situation right now. <laughs> yeah, it's also of course a big investment. Yeah, of course it is. Three uh, k. I don't know what the the word is on the time. Normal summon effect, Vela. <laughs> He's actually doing this. He's going to synchro into Tatsunoko. <laughs> okay, here we go. We, <laughs> Tatsunoko beatdown. Okay, now we can say we have seen it all this weekend. <laughs> oh, that's a 1700 attack, Tatsunoko. Uh, no, okay. That's <laughs> Didn't last very long. No. So he was able to synchro using Tatsunoko from hand into Leo. But... Um, <laughs> Alexander, what, wait, what, what? What did he synchro with that? Oh, he synchroed the, I, the instant fusion was next. Gamma seal. Did he synchro with gamma seal? Um, it's still on the hand according to our app. That's crazy. I didn't even see that coming. 
um, his uh, speed ride. Uh, I can't remember the name. And just a second ago, we were like, yeah, he doesn't really have anything. Chamber. I didn't realize that he would be able to do that. He would be able to um, Tatsunoko and then synchro from hand. And Leo is really hard to remove for a couple of decks. Scalding. On the battle fader. Yeah. Quite interesting. Damage going through. I don't actually know what high, sp high speed droid uh, Chanbara does. So let's let's learn together. You can make a second attack during each battle phase. Whoa! With t 2,000 attack, that's not bad. 2,200 against 200 attack at the start of the um, damage step as well. So now uh, Giorgio has to read the card and he's going to realize, oh my, I'm going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, that's that's like really close to game. Yeah. That's 4,400. 44 plus the 31 from Leo. It's just a few That's life 75. points. Seventy-five. Wow, <laughs> that's just out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. It's just a second ago we were like, "Oh yeah, they they both have hands that are not going to do much. Uh, this game is going to take a little while." That's how it felt. Only have their side decks in hand. We're also debating whether the um, non-activation of scolding for the foolish was the correct move. Now it turns out that Alexander came up with the best line of plays. You could never predict. You could never ever predict the the um, that battle fader, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've seen the battle fader completely unpredictable. That one uh, Jake Quincy a game on the stream. Yeah, I'm having flashbacks. I was in Prague. Oh, yeah, Prague this year. What year was it? I think it was this year. Yeah. It, it it happened somewhat recently. Oh, uh, and there's of the challenge, of course. <laughs> that is the game. There's nothing that Shoju can do, or can he? He's rereading Tatsunoko to make sure that all of these plays were viable. Uh, didn't he have the Prime Monarch in his? Uh, in but his he's got nothing to. But uh, he he didn't use it before because he didn't want to lose it to an attack. Or yeah, oh, wow. he's got nothing to banish. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander Hulj out of nowhere. Yeah, completely. Wi that was. You can't help but feel bad for Giorgio, to really be honest. Really crazy. Okay, I think we got a lot to talk about. Let's uh, talk about our... Uh, let's move on with our post-match discussion after this showing.